Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making onion fritters. Uh, onion fritters are really simple a uh, really old side dish or appetizer or snack and they're pretty quick i'm gonna get started mixing stuff up here because i want to let my fritter batter set in just a minute before i start frying it and i'll talk about it as i mix it up but real quick you need three quarters of a cup of flour and i'm using all purpose today so i also have two teaspoons of baking powder and you want a little salt in that, but you want a little more salt for your onions. You can adjust it anywhere from one to two teaspoons. I have about a teaspoon and a half. It brings out the flavor of the onions and really makes them good. I've also got almost a teaspoon of pepper and the salt and the pepper, like I said, they're just mainly to taste. You adjust them. I have a tablespoon of regular cornmeal. Now, you could do these with um, like a cornmeal mix type thing if you wanted to instead of using the flour, but that tablespoon of cornmeal really is going to add some flavor to them, and I've got a tablespoon of sugar. Those are both optional, and you can adjust them to suit your taste. I've got about two, two and a half cups of chopped onions, and you can do these with any onions but they are really good with a sweet onion and in particular a Vidalia onion if you can get it. Those are grown in Vidalia, Georgia and that's the only place in the world they're grown, but there are sweet onions from other places. So, And I've got three quarters of a cup of milk here. Any milk at all will work. It doesn't matter what fat percentage it is or anything like that, just any milk. So let's get started here real quick. I'm gonna combine my flour and my cornmeal and my sugar. And like I said, the cornmeal, you don't have to have it, and the sugar, you don't have to do it, but it's really gonna make it taste better. The salt and the pepper are to taste. You do want to do the baking powder. And if you have self-rising flour, you wanna add a little bit of baking powder to it, and a little bit of salt. You won't need quite as much, um, but you're still gonna wanna add some to it. it otherwise, your fritters won't they'll be too dense. Okay, now once you get your dry ingredients, just whisk a little bit, go ahead and add your milk in there and give that a little stir. And this is gonna make kinda like a pancake batter. This does not have any eggs in it. Um, I suppose you could add an egg if you wanted to, but you don't really have to. And as I said, this is one of those simple, quick recipes. Maybe give you a side dish with a summer meal. It'll go with anything. Um, the onions, I have mine chopped pretty fine. You can cut them however coarse or however fine you want. You could even slice them and um, leave them really, really coarse if you wanted to. And like I said, I'm using Vidalia onions. And one of the reasons why I'm doing fritters out of my Vidalia onions is because this year they all kind of look like this and they're about this size, leastways all the ones we've been getting around here. And Vidalia onions make a great onion ring, but you can't hardly make an onion ring out of an onion this size. So onion fritters are another way to use those delicious sweet onions. Okay, now I'm just going to stir my onions up in my batter. If you want a good onion ring recipe, I'll uh, put a link to my onion rings in the description of this video in case you're getting some nice big onions. Uh, the onion ring recipe that I use is probably the best one I have ever tasted. So I'll link that to this so you can make onion rings too if you want to. I don't think you can ever have too many onion recipes. And that literally is all there is to mixing up the batter. And if you can let it sit about 15 minutes or so before you start frying it, they'll come out better. It is pretty thick. Um, you can see how thick it is here. 
And that sit and 15 minute rule is kind of good for any kind of quick bread. And this is sort of quick bread. Okay, now I'm gonna get my skillet turned on here. I wanna let it preheat. You don't wanna add these to a cold pan. And the only other thing I'm using is I have a little oil in my pan, not too much. You wanna put enough in there to fry them. You're not really deep frying them. Um, you're pouring them in and frying them like a fritter, not drowning them. And you can use any kind of oil you want. You can even use like bacon fat or lard, or um, you could use butter. These would be really, really good in butter. And you know, the kind of oil you pick just depends on your taste and your diet. You could use corn oil, you can use olive oil, grapeseed oil, whatever. Any kind of oil will work to fry them. You can take just a little bit of your fritter batter and kind of put it in your pan. And when it starts to get bubbles around it, then you will know that your oil is hot enough that you can add your, the rest of your fritters. And you can see mine's not really bubbling. It's got just a few little tiny bubbles right around the edge of it. So we're gonna let that warm up just a little bit more. I said, you definitely don't wanna put them in a cold pan. They'll spread way out and they'll stick and be soggy. Waiting until that oil gets hot will make sure the outside of your fritter is nice and crisp. Okay, I'm starting to get some pretty good bubbles now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my fritters. And how big you make these or how small you make them is kind of up to you. Um, I don't like mine too big because I like for them to get done all the way through in the middle. But I like them big enough, you know, so you know you've got something on your plate. And once the pan gets good and hot, you do want to turn your heat down a little bit. We're going to cook them on about medium. Don't crowd them too much. You don't need to try to make them all at one time because it don't take too long to cook them, just a few minutes on each side until they're nice and golden brown. And when they're nice and golden brown on the outside, they'll be done on the inside. While these are cooking, I kind of want to share something with those of you who share your faith publicly maybe to help encourage you and help you deal with those people who can be very, very critical. I know there are more and more people online who are sharing their faith and a lot of folks are having trouble dealing with how critical some people are of that. Um, that's a good thing. Luke 6, says, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company, and they shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. If you are sharing Jesus and people are hating you and rejecting you and separating themselves from you, that means you're doing something good. It means God is pleased with you and He is going to bless you. Okay, let's check on our fritters. The way you know when any fritter is ready to turn is when your little bubbles on the top start to pop. That's the same with pancakes or corn fritters or onion fritters or anything else. If the bubbles on the top start popping, you know it's ready to flip it over. It's not gonna fall apart and it's gonna be done on the other side. So if you're one of my brothers or sisters who's been on YouTube and, or Facebook or anywhere else and you've been sharing your faith and people are leaving negative comments, don't let that discourage you. That's a good thing. It really is. And God's going to bless you for doing that. But the way that we handle it should be in a biblical way. God doesn't want us to argue with those people who disagree with us. He doesn't want us to force our point of view on those people who disagree with us. Um, he gives everybody free will. And what Matthew 10, 14 says, And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or that city, Shake off the dust of your feet. 
That means when you've told them, if they disagree with you, if they reject it, if they are mean about it, don't dwell on that. Don't let that bother you. Don't argue with them. Shake off the dust and move on. Now, that's easy to do in an online platform. You simply delete the comment and block the person. Um, I don't believe that God wants us getting in that ditch with those people and arguing with them. He said, if, if they don't hear you, if they reject you, go on. You don't have to feel the need to defend yourself. God will defend you. His word says he will bless you. Uh, blessed are you when men do that to you. And he really will. So if you're online and you're sharing your faith, or if you're just sharing your faith in a public way at your job or wherever, and people are mean about it, don't argue with them. Don't, don't get in that ditch with them. Brush the dust off and move on and keep going. And don't let that bother you. Don't let it discourage you. Um, it's a blessing. God promises you that He's going to bless you. And He is true to His Word. So don't be afraid to share your faith even if people disagree with you. Just move on. And I, I really hope that this encourages more people to get out there and try. That is my number one tip for people when they tell me they want to start a YouTube channel or they want to start doing videos on Facebook and they want to share their faith. I tell them when those people come at you, just delete it, block it, and move on. And if you've been struggling with that, that is my number one piece of advice for you. Thank God for it. Accept His blessing and move on. Okay, let's check our fritters again here. Oh, those are looking so good. Now, you can see here this one is a little bit light, like this side over here is not quite done. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it again. You can flip these until you get them done exactly the way you want them, the exact crispness that you want them. Um, boy, that side looks great. So I could have waited just a second longer to flip them the first time, but um, like I said, you can flip them again. They got nice little bubbles in them from my oil. That means that the inside is gonna be nice and crisp too. It's gonna have little crisp pockets and all my onions are gonna be cooked real good and everything. And you want enough oil to do that, but like I said, you're not deep frying them. I probably, I'd say don't have much more than an eighth of an inch of oil in here. I don't have anywhere near a quarter of an inch. And you can use more if you want to. It won't hurt anything. It's just any kind of fat's a little bit expensive, whether it's oil or butter or something else. So I try not to use a whole lot more than what I need to get the job done. When you're frying something like fritters to maintain the temperature in your pan, if you will add your next round before you take the first round out, it will keep the pan temperature even and your second batch won't burn. So you like slide them over and add one and take one out and add another one. And take one out. Another way you know when it's time to turn them is that they kind of release from the bottom. Where I slid those over, I had to give them a little bit of help, but once they're ready to turn, they'll move real easy. They come off the bottom of the pan. Now, I made these last night, and Brett and I ate almost a whole batch. Uh, and we had them with dinner. They're, they're so good that... Uh, they kind of ended up being the main course. We didn't eat the meat that we had. We ended up eating extra fritters, both of us. Realistically, a batch this size should feed at least six people if you're doing them for like a side dish or something. If you're doing them for an appetizer, maybe four people. But it's super easy to double it and 
you know, you can put them in the oven to keep them warm if you're making a whole bunch and you want to serve them with dinner. If I was um, doing them for dinner, I would like mix up my batter and then peel my mashed potatoes and stuff like that and cook these while I was cooking everything else. But I would mix these up first so that my batter had time to sit because if you let it sit about 15 minutes, they really come out better. It just does something good to the batter. It gives the baking powder and stuff time to process with the flour and they taste better and they're lighter and crisper and everything. So I hope you hang on to this recipe. This is a really good, easy onion recipe and onions are pretty healthy. I mean, well, onions are very healthy. So if you pick a healthy oil, this is a side dish or an appetizer or snack that you can really feel good about making. And I got to tell you, I can almost see this as like a grilled ham and cheese sandwich. <laughs> Put some ham and cheese in the middle of a couple of these and make me a sandwich out of them. They're that good. Uh, Lunch time. But give these a try. You're going to want to add this recipe to your everyday recipes and hang on to it. It really is that good. Everybody loves it and kids even like these. They are so good. Thank you all so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you have not already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first. <laughs>